Hey Beer Geeks, I know it's like the Wild West out there in terms of beer terms. Uh, and last week we did uh, weird things that brewers might say. Well this week we're doing stupid stuff that beer geeks might say. We went on social, or rather Brad went on social and gathered a load of words uh, that people don't necessarily understand or people think are stupid that people are using in the beer industry. Mm. And he is going to test me as we try to translate them so it's quick fire nonsense from the Craft Beer Channel. Alrighty. <laughs> Okay, this one is a personal favourite of mine and some of our friends. Crisp slash crispy Straight slash in. crispy boy. <laughs> Straight in at the deep end. Uh, so people use this generally talking about lager, yeah. uh, about how it's really clean on the finish, really dry, snappy, I think is another word you could use. Yeah. Uh, the interesting thing is, and this was pointed out by Mark Dredge, one of our good friends, uh, very few lagers are actually that crispy. Mm. Uh, like northern German pilsners like the Yevers and Lost and Grounded's beer are crispy boys, right? Yeah. But bohemian pilsners with their deep caramel and sarsy aromatics are not crispy. Crisp to me just feels like it's immediate, it's urgent, it's like, oh yeah. Yeah, that's why I want to drink more of that. Yeah. So West Coast IPAs, I think, yeah. are really good dry pale ales as yeah. well, can be crispy. Could be crispy. Don't just think it's a, an insult to uh, light lagers. Balanced. Balanced. So, yeah, I can see why people get confused by that one. People mostly use it as an insult. They go, oh, well, it's well-balanced. So, yeah, I mean, for me, well-balanced beer would be something that it's not like angular. It's, it's, it's not jumping out at any sort of crazy. Yeah, you wouldn't sit there and go, that's really hoppy, or that's really malty, or yeah. that's really yeah. phenolic, or that's really estery. You just go, everything is in proportion. Yeah. Which is common in lower-flavoured more sippable beer, which is, I think, why people see that as an insult. But brewing yeah. balanced beer is much harder than brewing fucking hoppy stuff or exactly. fucking sour stuff. Exactly. So although yeah. you might, it might not excite you, it's probably what you'll be drinking in the pub all night. Uh, it's like Guinness, isn't it, or something? It's it's something that's that's totally Yeah, yeah but even, and... I mean, I, I, I'd even say, like, this West Coast IPA that I'm drinking is yeah. super well balanced True. because it's got the balance of the malt, it's got the, the hoppiness that doesn't override it, and it's really dry, so it's really drinkable, so it's nicely balanced. It's like a, it's like a concerto, like an orchestra that are, they're all in sync together. Nothing is fighting. It's not There's a guitar the... solo. Exactly. It's, um, it's an it's, orchestra. It's, it's, it's uh, Coldplay, I don't know. Now I'm insulting again. Kettle Sours. So Kettle Sours are sour beers that are made by doing your mash as normal, moving it all over to the kettle, and then instead of boiling it, you leave it for mm. 24, 48, 36 hours yeah. uh, after inoculating it with lactobacillus, which is a souring bacteria, mm. which we talk about in our other video, uh, and that lowers the pH, makes it sour. Uh, and it's called kettle sour because that happens yeah. in the kettle, in the kettle as opposed to like yeah. mixed fermentation beers yeah. where it's all happening at once, the fermentation, the souring. Yeah. It's a bit sort of looked down upon, isn't it? I guess in a lot of people's eyes. Yeah, but some people it's call just, it quick sours, which, it, you know, it's, I think it's legit. Yeah, it's, a, it's just, just another the, tool the brewer has. Exactly. It's yeah. a different way of making a sound. Exactly. And you end up with a crisp. <clears throat> Never mind. Next one. <laughs> Mouthfeel. Mouthfeel. So there's that super wanky word that we talked about earlier. <laughs> Mouthfeel. It's how it feels on your tongue. It could be viscous. It could be really thin and watery. It I could be really carbonated or yeah. it could be quite flat. I think I'm a big proponent of mouthfeel, to be honest. Like, I think I would say my palate's not as developed as your palate. No way. And for me, like mouthfeel, along with obviously how it tastes and how it smells, the aromatics of it, it's a big, it's a big factor. It's a, I think it's it's like massively underplayed. I think it's huge in beers that you're going to have more than one of. Yeah. Because if you've if it's not got the right mouthfeel, it's going to start to be like too carbonated, or it's going to start to be too flat and get watery. It could be like, claggy. It could yeah, be a bit thin. Could stick around. Could be like oh, it's, it's not basically good. everything that's not flavour. It's just how it feels. Yeah. Like once you swallow, what does your mouth feel like, and what exactly. does it feel like while the liquids? in there because for some reason some beer doesn't feel great yeah in yeah, your yeah. mouth everything other than flavor yeah in your mouth yeah interesting isn't it that i'm gonna have to say this one in a geeky voice Go on. oh it's better on cars <laughs> when people say it's better on cask or better on keg what they're saying is the two intrinsic values that those forms of serving have mm. work better for a certain style so classically british bitters are better on cask for sure because you'll get more of that sweet uh, residual sweetness from the malt, you'll get more of those uh, sweet esters, you'll get less of the pronounced hot bitterness because carbonic acid, which is high, which is the bubbles in your beer, that's bitter as well. Yeah. So on cast, you'll get less of that, whereas like a big West Coast IPA mm. might well be better on uh, keg 
yeah. you get that extra bitterness, you get all the aromatics floating up in your face as the bubbles burst, yeah. and it might be brighter even though it might, you know, if it was flat, it would be quite sticky, but while it's got a carbonation, uh, it's, it's lighter, so it's better on keg. Wild spontaneous. Wild beer is essentially any beer that's got yeast in it that wasn't necessarily added by the brewer. Mm -hmm. So it's stuff that might have come in from the air, so that'd be spontaneous, or from fruits, so that'd be spontaneous, or it might be um, that they've added a mix, a mix of different bugs uh, and yeasts that have come from yeah. other areas and gone in. So wild's a bit of a wishy-washy term. Spontaneous literally has to be stuff that has been added not yeast that's been added, so fruit has, has yeast on it. Yeah. Vegetables have yeast on it. The yeah. air has yeast in it. What you... Wild can be controlled, whereas spontaneous is at the, at the will of the air. The air. To some extent, to yeah. Some you extent. throw those apples in, but you don't know exactly what's on what's it. On Although them. some labs are analysing that now. So there's no real, true wild beer. There's still lots of sport, spontaneous beer, really. This one's my, uh, my favourite radio station, uh, Smooth. It's also your favourite song by Santana. <laughs> Oh, I'm so smooth. <laughs> Glad I got that out of you. Uh, so it. smooth, that's what you use a lot uh -huh. when it's not easy. I, I do. Yeah, that's true. So yeah, I guess it could be, it's, it's not like, it's not quite, I can feel that it's, it's quite sedate. There isn't too much uh, yeah. kind of alcohol booze going on. There's a little bit of crisp. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of balance. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of things working together that just yeah. make it a much more... Easy it's, experience than you expected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 smooth FM rather than jazz FM. Right. Dry sweetness. Dry, dry and sweet. sweet. Uh, yeah. So dry beer is technically it's beer that has almost mm. no sugar in it. Mm -hmm. Like a dry white wine has very little sugar in it. So it's saying that there was no sweetness on the finish at the end of that. Sweet would obviously be the opposite. I think people can fuse dryness with bitterness. Yeah. You can have a sweet beer with high bitterness, but you can't have a sweet beer with dryness. Like those are the, the two opposites. Right. Equally, you can have a dry beer that has no bitterness, uh, which in particular, a lot of brute IPAs when they came out were, were exactly that. People were dry hopping like it's a New England IPA, so low bitterness, but it was incredibly dry, which I think confused, well, everyone, which me. is why brute me. IPA didn't it's stick around. <laughs> yeah, not a fan, really. But hey, it's something we get. Thin or thick? I know I like mine thick, usually. <laughs> <laughs> oi, oi. Rather, um, than, rather than thin, Johnny. So that's specific to the body. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people talk about body and think it's nonsense. Like, I to to try and explain that to people, I think you should you should try putting like a, a, a non-alcoholic drink a non-alcoholic beer, mm. and then drink a fourteen percent imperial stout. Right. Yeah. So those are the extremities of where you're going to get body. One of them is going to be thick and viscous and treacly. Mm. One of them is going to be like water. Right. So that's not bollocks. That's just obvious right? that's viscosity so, yeah it's literally viscosity so we just have to accept that in between that there's a whole gradient and so when we have an imperial stat with nine percent you know it could have been highly attenuated there could be no sugar in there yeah and you'll end up with a with a, a, a thinner beer than you would have if you left loads of sugar in there and it was syrupy i'm always disappointed when you get we get the high high alcohol boys like that and then they're thin but equally with an ipa you might want it quite thin. A West Coast double IPA. Yeah, West Coast. You don't Coast, want that yeah. viscosity. So That's true. it's not necessarily the strength of the beer that should dictate how thick it is. It is the style of the beer that it should. Personal favourite of mine, Johnny. I just looked. I cheated. Juicy. Juicy. Juicy banger. So juicy I have some bugbears with, even though we use it the whole time. <laughs> um, juicy for me is specific to New England IPA. Mm -hmm. It's that big, rounded, like I'm chewing on juicy fruit chewing gum vibe. Lots of people use it for lots of different things, often just for hoppiness, just like, oh, it's juicy. Mm. Um, I guess because it can come from the yeast, it can come from the hops, it can come from fruit that you add. Um, I think juicy is a state of mind, though. You reckon? Yeah. He doesn't want to be juicy. <laughs> right, this one is a bit of dank. 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 Dank, bruv. I think it literally comes from, like, weed culture, like... Yeah, totally. Stoner boys. Definitely. Uh, it's stuff that smells... Really resinous, really like a oily, uh, weedy kind of smell. Sweet Mary Jane. Yeah, I think it's a comp definitely a compliment in weed. Like if it's dank weed, it's good weed. It's like I big, bold, oily, gloopy, piney resinous. weed, resinous okay. weed. Yeah, and that is what they're talking about in beer. So if you if you smell a beer that smells a bit weedy, it's dank. 
Uh, I think they call it the ickiest of the stickiest. Ickiest of the stickiest. There you go. That's a great way of describing it. Sticky. Guys, I hope that's translated some words for you. Uh, we've got our technical terms video flashing up at the end of this video, as well as our best of 2020, which we were drinking during this. If you have any questions about stupid shit that Big Geek say, comments below, we will answer, or some really angry person on YouTube will do it for us. <laughs> uh, all the best, guys. Happy January.